Here we're going to talk about creating a course and importing sections in PowerSchool. So you want to log into PowerSchool. You want to go to School under Setup. I'm going to go to Courses because you have to have courses in before you can import sections. You can also import courses, and we'll cover that in another clip. Here I have three courses set up. My new course. Uh, let's just go ahead and run through. Click a new course. I'm going to call this my other course. Let's give it a number, 998813. You can give it an alternate course if you have a course that belongs to the school or is privy to the school, but the state requires something else. Pick the years that you want it to be available for. Credit hours, we're gonna go ahead and make this one credit hour with a maximum of one. Uh, see how Pico get into that later. Uh, create type. We're gonna call this an elective course. It could be English, math, social studies, any category that it falls into. You have to pick a grade scale. I'm going to pick high school. Value added points would come in as if you were taking in some dual enrollment classes, they give a value added grade, gives it another point to your GPA. So if you're on a, you know, a regular A, B, C, D, E, F scale with four being one and F being zero, if the student made a B, instead of getting three points, they would get four points for that grade. We're going to include in GPA class rank and honor roll. You can exclude, not using it for lunch. Exclude on report cards and transcripts. You can check that button if you do not want this course to show up. Like if you had a remediation class for no credit and you want the students to take it, but you don't want it printing on a transcript because there's no credit, you would check that box. Type code here in Louisiana, I'm going to call it regular, but there's honors. That's a good long list here. Dual enrollment would be if the high school student was taking classes at community college, college, or university. Eagle course testing, immersion. In Louisiana, we have immersion classes in some schools. Work-based category, a uh, DE type class. So anyway, we fill out our basic information. You hit submit. And then let's go back, check our course list. And here's the courses that we've entered. Next, we're going to import sections. In yellow are the required fields. In blue are the recommended fields, but not necessarily required. You have your examples and you have your descriptions. So as we scroll across the sheet, you see from the markings in the yellow section what is actually required to import. So I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to show you. I've taken this sheet and I've created a layout for my school that has the required fields in it, except for grade level. I don't really need it. It could be put there, it could not. If you have grade level specific courses where that would come in play, it's probably in your elementary classes, maybe middle school classes. High school, not so much because you have a mixture of grade levels in some classes. So I'm going to go off of the courses we entered earlier. This course I've previously imported. So this is my school ID for my super duper school. So I'm going to take this course number and change it to one we entered earlier. Uh, I think this was a one, two here at the end of this. The course name was uh, my new course. That term ID. This is important because when you set up PowerSchool initially at the start of the year, you set up your years and terms. And each year and term has its own term ID that you use to import file into or extract from. It's one means to extract from. The current year is 3000 or 30. So I'm going to use term ID 3000 for the 2021 school year. Teacher number, this is my teacher that I know in my system. I have her teacher number. You can pull up your staff and right there on their staff page under information, you'll see their teacher number listed at the top. You can also do a quick export of that information if you need. The expression, this school will have six periods set up with a single day, so period 1A. I'm going to take this course and I'm going to change it to period 2A. The attendance type code is 2. The attendance mode is meeting. So we're going to put ATT underscore mode meeting. It tells PowerSchool how to handle that. And then gradebook type is two. That's for Power Teacher Pro. Grade level, again, we're going to leave it blank. So I want to add another course here. So I'm going to go, and I'm going to take and copy this one. And 
course number is going to, oh, hang on, this is the wrong course number here. Let's correct this real quick. 998812 is that course. So we're going to enter a new course, 998813. I'm going to take this new course, or this additional course, this is going to be called My Other Course. And you have a section number here. So in this section number, we use 1A. Uh, that's actually on a previous section number. So we're going to call this, uh, I'll just leave it at 1A. Now, PowerSchool will tell you not to use alphanumeric section numbers. It works fine. 20 years, I've never had a problem with alphanumeric section numbers. And you can change that section number at any time. The other thing is, once you create a section, that section is given an internal ID number. That internal ID number can be found, I will show you on a teacher schedule. Mary Contrary is my teacher. So I have a class previously imported for her. So we will click on the section number. And the real section number, internal section number, that PowerSchool uses to communicate can be found right here at the bottom called the section ID. So that's the important number with sections. That's how it links the section to courses and students, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go back to our spreadsheet here. And I'm using Apple numbers to create this sheet. So I'm going to give it a, I'm just going to say this is 3B. And we're going to do term ID of 3000. Mary's number is 101. Expression we're going to give is P. Uh, three a day. Let's just go back and make this uppercase for consistency. Okay, keep the attendance type code to two. I'm going to copy this meeting code here. Grade book, we're using Power Teacher Pro. So, grade level, I'll leave that blank. If you're using numbers, you will take this, you will export it to a CSV file. I'm going to put it on my desktop. I'm going to call it sections too. So now we're going to import the sections. So I'm going to go back to the start page. I'm going to click on importing and exporting. I'm going to click on quick import tables. I'm going to select sections master schedule. Because I use Apple numbers and I created a CSV file, I'm going to change this to other and I'm going to change this to comma for comma separated values. I'll leave that to CR and Mac Roman. I'm going to choose my Section 2 CSV file, choose for upload. I want to leave this check for suggest field map. I'm going to say import. And just quickly check, make sure my mapping is correct. Of course, I'm going to leave blank for importing section number, section number, term ID, teacher number. There's in the list. Teacher number, make sure it matches. Expression, attendance, these all match. Grade level, I'm going to exclude the first row. You would put a check here if you want to update records that have been previously imported. After you check, exclude first row. I'm going to hit submit. It tells us they were imported successfully, shows you they were imported. If something was wrong, you, this would be in red with the error being stated as to where to look for the actual error message. Now we're going to go look at teacher schedules. We're going to look at Mary. And here are the courses we just imported for Mary. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and share. Y'all have a great day.